Hello, good afternoon everybody and uh, welcome to Deborah's Celebration of Achievements. Um, my name is Hugh Thompson, I'm Director of Fundraising and Communication here at Deborah and I'm delighted to be joined by so many of you today. Um, a couple of housekeeping points to start with. Um, we're expecting this event to last about 35-40 minutes, um, so thank you for your time first up. Um, as you can see, this is being organised in a COVID secure environment, so it's just me here in the office um, and I'm relying on my IT support to get us through uh, the presentations. Um, I'm afraid we've had to obviously pre-record the interviews for today uh, and the presentations um, apart from my own. Um, normally we'd of course be holding this event live and we'd be inviting questions and feedback. Um, we're going to try and use the, uh, the chat function to do that. Uh, if I'm not able to answer your questions today, I can certainly do so in follow up to this event um, or indeed you can email me directly. Um, so, as I said, thank you very much indeed for, for joining us today. We're going to start now with um, a couple of videos. One, first of all, from our patron, Countess of Wessex, and she's going to be followed by our CEO, Tony Byrne. Thank you for supporting Deborah. I'm sorry I can't be with you today. My life has been greatly enriched by the many people living with EB who I have met. I never knew how much suffering the human body could withstand until I witnessed the full effects of living with EB. Through the pain, the scars, the trauma, and the emotional burden of it all, I have never come across a more positive or determined group of people. Shortly, you will hear from people who will speak far more compellingly than I about the difference this has made to their lives. There is no more compelling cause. Your generous support will enable Deborah to continue its work to support those living with EB. It will also fund research into a cure for this life-limiting condition. Thank you. I'm delighted to be joined now by Tony Byrne, new CEO of Deborah. Uh, Tony, you joined us back in October of last year. Tell me, how's the first 100 days been? <laughs> well, it's been challenging. Uh, it's been challenging for most people. Um, obviously, whenever you join an organisation, you expect to go and meet people. Uh, I've been meeting people virtually. And so probably been into the office four or five times. But other than that, it's been on video screen. Um, so that has been a challenge um, and, it, and I think for all of the people involved in Deborah, it's been it's been tough. But one thing that has come through in everything in my interactions with everybody is how positive and committed uh, our Deborah team is. They have done a stunning job in terms of adapting and developing and how they support the EB community um, throughout this. So I take my hat off to them in terms of what they've done. And I think one of the other things that I've found is that we work with some wonderful, wonderful research uh, colleagues and people from the NHS and how that they interact with us supporting the EB community. And that is both here and abroad. So we've what I've learned uh, in my 100 days is a committed team uh, working uh, tirelessly to try and tackle EB and uh, to try and get the best that they can from themselves and the technology we're now forced to use. Thank you. And can you tell us um, how how's the pandemic affected the charity as a whole? Well, the pandemic has affected us as as it done has done with everyone else. <clears throat> um, we haven't got a crystal ball. We don't know what the future holds. But in terms of where we think we'll be, uh, we think we're going to probably be in a lost position of three and a half million pounds probably by the end of March, which is the impact since the pandemic first started in 2020. Um, but what that has enabled us to do is continue the journey of looking at our costs. Um, we were in a very sound financial position when the pandemic started with limited reserves, and we've been able to look and prioritise how we care for our EB community. But the, one of the things that we have ensured we've done is we've continued the investment in research fighting EB. Thank you. And now 
looking forwards, um, perhaps you could uh, give us a sense of what your plans are for taking the charity forwards. Well, my first and absolute plans is to fight TB. That is to continue investing in research, looking for cure and looking for better treatment for the EB community. It's there to ensure that we continue supporting the partnership we have with the NHS. We do co-fund uh, EB nurses. We've funded podiatry. We've got a fantastic community support team that goes out and contacts and works with the EB community every day. We need to ensure that we look at continue funding specialist healthcare. We need to look at increase our knowledge and awareness of EB both here and abroad. We need to really, really look at how we enhance and make better the lifelong support we give to the members of our EB community. And we need to encourage international best practice. We have some clinical guidelines. We're working with partners with Deborah International. And we need to make sure that everything we do is always focused on supporting EB, our members, both in cure and care. That's what we're about and that's what we need to do. And I think one of the big successes that we had in all of this was going back to January 2020 when we had uh, a conference held in London named EB 2020. But we had 750 people from all around the world come and discuss EB. So they were sharing best practice and therefore that was a major, major step for us. And we should celebrate that because that was a major event in the life of curing EB. Thank you. And um, obviously, Deborah is wholly reliant on its supporters to carry out its work. Um, in a nutshell, any message you want to pass on to all of those supporters who are listening now? Can I just say thank you? Thank you very much for everything you do, you've done for us. Even in the pandemic, you continue to support us, raise awareness, raise funds. If you hadn't have done that and you hadn't done that in the past, we wouldn't be where we are today. Really, it's a thank you. We'd also thank you for the future. We don't know what the future begin, uh, holds for us, but the one thing it does hold is the continuation of fighting EB and supporting our members. So with that, my message to you is thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Tony. We're delighted, obviously, to have Tony on board. Um, and as he said, we are completely committed to supporting the EB community. Our next video features Claire Mather explaining just how we do that. Hello, I'm Claire Mather, the Director of Healthcare and Community Support at DEBRA. As you may know, DEBRA supports the EB community across the UK through the provision of specialist healthcare at hospitals such as Birmingham Women's and Children's Centre, Great Ormond Street and Guy's and St Thomas's. The partnership between Deborah and the NHS is crucial and has a direct impact on the increased quality of life for people living with EB through greater access to specialist care. This includes additional home visits, local outreach clinics and bereavement support. The teams also help provide specialist EB training to other professionals, carers and school staff, which makes a big difference in every sense, including helping reduce patient and staff anxiety, as well as providing the very best of care. There are currently 18 specialist EB nurses in the UK, and we fund up to 25% of each of the nurses' costs. Over the years, we have committed funding to many vital projects, such as £105,000 to develop an accredited EB podiatry training course, and up to £64,000 a year on developing best practice guidelines that are essential to ensure the best standard of care is provided in such a rare condition. And a couple of years ago, Deborah provided a quarter of a million pounds towards the creation of Guy's and St Thomas's rare disease centre, which we continue to support today. We also fund inpatient grants, small pieces of equipment, travel and accommodation to enable EB patients and their carers to attend specialist appointments, which is vital. Deborah also funds a team of 11 community support and membership managers who are working flat out to support people with EB and their families throughout this pandemic. Back in March, we telephoned all of our members to find out their personal situation and to see if they needed our direct help and support. And we're repeating those wellbeing calls again now that we're in lockdown three. We've been able to help people with IT training, 
um, so that they can shop online safely and keep in touch with friends and families. We've also set up virtual support groups that have made a huge difference to people, especially those living alone and when, they can't, when people can't get out and about easily during the pandemic. We have provided emergency food supplies and then set up local support to continue those supplies. And most of all, we've been available to members who've needed financial guidance and help, or even just somebody to listen and be there and help them navigate through the challenges of living with EB. Your support enables us together to make a big difference. And throughout 2020, we continue to fund all of our care and support services and we will continue to do this again this year and into the future. Making a difference to people's lives today is essential, but we are still fully committed to funding and pioneering research and treatments and one day hopefully a cure for EB. We're part of a worldwide network of EB charities and make one of the largest donations to EB research funds of all of the national groups. Our priorities are the understanding of the biology and genetics of EB, the development of therapies such as gene therapy, drug therapy, and building an understanding to lead to the development of wound healing and better treatment and prevention of skin cancer in EB. We're currently funding 18 pioneering projects and we're ambitious and determined to continue this work. I'd like to thank all of you on behalf of our support and clinical teams, the research team, and most of all, everybody in the EB community. Without your help, we would not be able to make a difference at DEBRA. So thank you all. Thank you, Claire. Um, so today is entitled DEBRA Celebration of Achievements um, because we have been able to achieve great things. Um, over the next few minutes, I actually want to look at some of the achievements that you've done for us uh, because whilst 2020 may have been a year to forget for many actually there's some quite memorable things that I'd like to to highlight now. Back in February nine intrepid supporters ventured to Sweden to raise funds for Deborah uh, braving temperatures colder than minus 10 degrees they even slept out in their own snow holes but most importantly Together they raised over £40,000. Um, thank you very much to all of them and I do hope that they've warmed up. Deborah is reliant on its major events, as many of you know, to raise money. Um, we did do some events in 2020. Uh, we started the year with uh, our great chef's dinner. Uh, Michelle Rue was joined by an all-female lineup of chefs um, and collectively they enabled us to raise over £40,000 which is a fantastic amount, amount of money. Um, thanks to the can-do efforts of all of our team, we went ahead with events where it was allowed and safe to do so. Um, here's another example with our EJ Churchill clay pigeon shoot, which raised over 30,000 pounds. And we were so fortunate um, to set the date for this dinner back on the 9th of March, a couple of weeks before the first lockdown. Um, we were delighted to be joined by over 450 people at the Hilton Hotel in Glasgow um, for uh, a night to, to entitle the Old Firm Dinner. Uh, the, the evening was put on by our Vice President, Graham Souness, as you can see pictured here, um, and he brought together some old, old chums from both Glasgow Rangers and Celtic football clubs to entertain the crowd in the evening. Perhaps most important guest was uh, standing there next to Graham, and that's young Isla Grist, who you're going to hear a bit more about later on. Amazingly, we raised over £100,000 to fund research projects through that event. Now, our events are obviously off the table right now, um, but we do have a plan to bring them back as soon as we're able to. Uh, keep yourself appraised of where we are via our website. A lot of people undertook various different challenges over the year. Um, and I want to pay tribute actually to my team here because um, fundraising marketing team have done a great job under very difficult circumstances. Um, this is one of them I picked out, this is Emma. She enjoys running and as you can see, she thought, well, if I'm going to go and do some running, I might as well get my, my friends involved as well. 
Um, but actually, this slide offers me the opportunity to talk about her day job because she has enabled us to successfully apply for over £250,000 from grant making trusts in 2020. Um, and I cannot thank them for their support enough. Absolutely brilliant. Um, 2.6 challenges. You might think, what does that refer to? Um, well, when the London Marathon was cancelled, um, there was a, a public push by the team at the London Marathon for charities to get on on the back of something called a 2.6 challenge. And I'm delighted to say that a lot of you supported it in your droves. Um, this is a lovely story about three year old Jamie. He took on the challenge, walked 26 laps of his garden, our very own Captain Tom. Um, so determined to finish, smashed his challenge, um, raised 573 pounds. Absolutely amazing. But actually, even more so, because Jamie has EV. He was born with severe EV and deep wounds to his feet. He looks very smart there in his Deborah t-shirt, but those are, are not blue socks he's wearing, that's his bandages. And for him to undertake that challenge was absolutely amazing. And, you know, our hearts go out to, to Jamie and everyone else who, who took part in events like this, challenges like this. Collectively, they raised over £15,000 to help us fight EV. I have to pay tribute to this, this young man, Mason White. I know many of you have seen him before. Um, he gets involved in quite a lot of fundraising and he did his own challenge during the month of May. He undertook a sporting challenge every day um, of the month. Um, here he is doing some sort of pulling exercise, um, doing the splits, which I'm sure many of us can't do in the middle there, and, and doing some gentle boxing with his dad. Mason lets us tell his story in a number of different ways, and we were able to get this story out onto social media with the support of these guys. The Brothers Trust. I know you're listening, guys, and here's our moment to just say to you, thank you so much for all that you help us do, uh, not just in the money that you raise with and for us, but crucially helping us tell our stories. Um, your reach on social media is immense. Your creativity uh, is admirable. Um, and we love working with you. And I just wanted to put that photo up because I know you love it as well. Um, Mason, through his challenges, raised something like £17,000, which is an incredible amount of money. EV Awareness Week. Every October, this event takes place. And it was very easy to be overshadowed by everything else that's going on in the news. Um, we focused on social media this year. Uh, we focused on EV to me stories. Uh, this one featuring Fazil and his brother up there on the screen. I'm delighted to say that we were able to reach over one million people. Um, and it's that increased awareness about EV, about the suffering, about just what it's like to live with this condition that enables our, our, uh, our reach to grow and for more people to know about what we do. The Boy Whose Skin Fell Off was recorded first of all about 15 years ago by Channel 4. It's a heartfelt tale of uh, the last days of Johnny Kennedy. Um, it's a very difficult watch, but it's available on the Channel 4 website. Uh, when it was first shown, it led to lots of people signing up to become direct debit supporters for Deborah, and many of them have remained so to this day. This is my chance to say thank you to them for sticking by us. Uh, it's also my chance to say to all of you, if you want to join them, you can download a, a regular giving form from our website. Um, but do watch the film. It's so relevant today as it was then. We launched our own challenge in August 2020, asking people to undertake a 100 kilometre challenge over the month, not necessarily in one day. Um, thanks to all of you who did so, uh, walked, ran, cycled, raised over £15,000. This gives me the opportunity to let you know that we're planning another challenge for you to take part in. Um, regrettably, it's going to be lockdown friendly, uh, potentially in March. So look out in your inbox and we hope you can take part. Whilst we're talking about challenges, um, I don't know if you saw the news recently, 
but the London Marathon team want to make their event in 2021 the biggest ever. So they've got 50,000 places for the real event taking place obviously in London, and they're encouraging a further 50,000 people at home to take part in the event. We've got 40 places for the real event. So if you know anyone who might like to take part, please point them our way. Um, they don't have to be uh, as fit as, as, as Emma and our other runners, but they do have to be committed to raising the funds. Um, throughout 2020, our golf team had a fantastic can-do attitude. Um, as many of you know, we run a lot of golf days each year and Gary and Lucy effectively uh, reorganized every single golf day uh, to ensure that one, they could go ahead, but two, they could go ahead uh, in, in a, a COVID friendly way. Um, thanks to them, we were able to do these golf days, raised over £100,000 and a huge thank you to our golf captain, John Isaacs, who set up a, an appeal page back in April when everything was an, under threat and it didn't look like anything would open again. And it raised over £15,000. Um, we've got 15 golf events planned for 2021 from April onwards. I'm delighted to say that places are booking up fast. Uh, so if you want to join us, please book via our website. One of the guys who regularly helps us is a golfer called Lawrence Blunt. Well, I say he's a golfer, he's a jeweler. Um, he plays a lot of golf though. And I wanted to put this, this up here to thank him because he donated some, some butterfly badges, diamond encrusted ones. Um, enabled us to raise a total of over £5,000. Thank you, Lawrence, and see you hopefully at St George's in April. We run a number of appeals throughout the year, um, and I just wanted to pay tribute to the Keeble family for allowing us to tell their story over Christmas. Um, we've all had a difficult time, but they had a newborn baby during the pandemic. Uh, and they face huge uncertainty for the future. Uh, they very kindly allowed us to tell their story over, over um, our, Chris, through our Christmas campaign, uh, and, and you really generously supported it. Uh, when combined with the big gift, this raised over £50,000, um, which will of course enable us to support Ray and hundreds of others with EB in the years ahead. It's so important to be able to tell the stories of people with EB because I think that's how we emotionally engage with you, our supporters. A word or two about retail, because Deborah has over 100 charity shops across the UK. Um, in fact, retail makes up 65% of our income and our stores are reliant upon donations to keep trading. When open from July through to November, many of our stores were trading at record levels. And the really good news is that when they open again, we know that the shoppers will come flying through the doors. Our brilliant retail team are helped by hundreds of dedicated volunteers to run each shop. And as soon as we can, we'll get them open and get those tills ringing. Um, this particular volunteer is actually our patron. Thank you very much indeed, Mum. Uh, as you can see, um, she gets involved with the charity on a very practical level, and we're so grateful to her for her support. In 2020, nearly £150,000 was generously donated to Deborah through Legacy Giving. We're so grateful to those of you who are willing to leave a gift in your will to Deborah. We have a free will making scheme that Deborah has signed up to. And if you'd like to find out more about this way of supporting the charity, please contact the fundraising team. Key messages that I personally would like you to take away from today Deborah is wholly reliant on your support because we have no statutory or government funding. As you heard from Tony earlier, the pandemic is likely to cost us something like £3.5 million and potentially will cost more. Our commitment to the EB community remains unchanged and we have never been so grateful of your continued support. Thank you. I think I'm back on screen again now. Um, so thanks to my IT team for, for, for running that presentation through. 
Um, as I said earlier, Graham Sunes put on a fantastic dinner, um, the old firm dinner back in March. Um, part of the money that was raised on that evening um, was used to fund a research project that we're, we're funding up at uh, something called the Beetson Institute in Glasgow. Now, the work there is undertaken by Professor Gareth Inman uh, and Dr. Jasbani Dayal. Um, in a minute or two, J Jasbani is going to tell you about that work, but to, to sort of put it in layman's terms, one of the, the cruelest byproducts of, of having EB is it makes you much more susceptible to skin cancer. And what we're trying to do is to look at how we can slow down the development of skin cancer cells. Um, here's Jasbani to tell you a bit more. Hi, my name is Dr. Jasbani Deal, and I work as a research scientist at the CRUK Beetson Institute in Glasgow. My research project is funded by Debra UK, and I mainly focus on finding potential treatment options for life-threatening skin cancers that arise in patients suffering from recessive dystrophic epidermolysis bullosa, or RDEB. I mainly focus on a specific protein called TGF-beta that can control cancer cell growth and development. We have known for quite some time that TGF-beta levels are increased in skin cancers arising in RDEB patients, and we're trying to find ways to target this specific protein for better treatment options in these patients. We've also recently published that a group of RDEB skin cancers can benefit from blocking TGF-beta signaling, and we're now in the process of finding which patient groups would benefit from such treatment options. Working at the CRUK Beetson Institute alongside multidisciplinary teams and access to state-of-the-art technology helps us with our research. Our work and efforts to fight EB and EB-related cancers would not be possible without all the funding support that we get from our funders. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank all our funders for all the immense support that they give us and all the EB-related research around the world. Thank you. Thank you, Jasbani. Um, our next two videos um, feature number one, our Vice President Graham Sunes, um, telling a little bit about why he got involved, um, and then a very special message from the Grist family. Hi, my name's Graham Sunes. I um, was a football player, soccer player, a long, long time ago, uh, then became a coach, stroke manager, and now I work in television. And as you can see, I'm a big supporter of Deborah. In fact, I'm proud to be the vice president here in the UK. Um, how I see my role is is um, bringing awareness to the devastating disease that is EB. I am um, I've been in a very privileged position throughout my life to go to many charity events to see some really poor children suffering from some terrible illnesses, um, but nothing has grabbed me like EB. I went to a dinner three years ago in London, the Kensington Garden Hotel, and there was a young lady there that night who spoke about the consequences of this disease. She had it, and she has it, this is Myra, she had it in, a, in quite a severe way, or has it in quite a severe way. And it was just, a, it just got to me, you know, the day-to-day the -day challenges that they have, not only they have, their families have, and the suffering that they have, an impact it has in general on, on the family. And it's devastating. That night I was sitting next to young Oliver, Thomas's family's mom and dad, and they, they have Ollie who, who is also, you know, suffers from EB and, and I've met Ollie at a golf event earlier this year, and what a strong character he is. He's a special young man. But I, I see my role is, is because of my profile is bringing awareness of the, the devasta devastating consequences of EB. You know, if, if you're privileged enough to be in the company of one of these children, you know, the courage they show is, is awe-inspiring. In fact, I've become particularly close to little Isla, Chris, who lives in Inverness. And when I'm in her company, it just, it, it obviously makes me very sad, but at the same time inspires me. And, and it's, it's, it's such a, she is such a unique little human being that, you know, you, you wake up every morning if you're feeling maybe sorry for yourself or you're feeling sad about something. 
I, I think of her and she inspires me. She makes me feel different immediately. She makes me forget about any issues I may have, which are trivial compared to the challenges she's going to face that day. Uh, last year, we managed to raise over £100,000 at a dinner we put on in Glasgow. It was an old firm dinner in Glasgow, which went very, very well. I think it exceeded everyone's expectations, certainly mine. So that was something, or is something, we're looking to do again in the near future, COVID allowing, when we get back to some sort of normality. Um, and the people there that night, and Isla was there, star of the show as usual. Um, you couldn't fail to, to, to get or to be moved by what this devastating illness does to these young people. So anyone watching this, if they feel it can help in any way, be significant or in a small way, please get in touch. Uh, it be much appreciated. And thank you for listening to me. Remember, this is a very, 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 very important cause. It's something that we must make a change. We must make a difference. We must be able to help these kids in some way. We must be able to make their lives better in some way. Help us if you can. Thanks for listening to me. Take 12. Thank you for joining the Make a Difference online Deborah event. We're the Gris family. Hi, I'm Isla. This is my older sister, Emily. This is my mum, Rachel. Hello. This is my little dog, Buster. This is my dad, Andy. Now we all live just north of Inverness. Pretty quiet up here at the moment with lockdown and Nessie's shielding, so we haven't seen him for a while. Now, Isla is 12 and has recessive dystrophic EB. She has absolutely no collagen 7 in her skin and that's a wee bit of a problem. Yeah, it is. Now Isla's the toughest person that we know and we know Graham Suness. Now it's a privilege to speak to you all for a few minutes today. And firstly, I'd like to say a few thank yous. And it's not just a thanks, or a tar, or a cheers, or a good on you, mate. It's a proper eye-to-eye -eye thank you from our hearts and hearts of the EB community to you. Your support enables the great team at Deborah to do the amazing things that they do for us. And they're not just amazing, at times they're vital fundamental. Now life is tricky for many people at the moment. There's healthcare concerns, financial concerns, and the pandemic is taking many lives. It's hard to express what living with EB is like, both for Isla and as a family. Isla's in chronic pain constantly, suffers from itch, which is debilitating, fatigue, because she's too tired, too sore and too itchy to sleep, and stress and worry. The best I can do is it's the hardest physical and mental battle I can imagine. At its worst, I think it's beyond my words, and perhaps even beyond words. It impacts the whole family. But also, there is a light. It highlights what is truly important in life. Love, kindness, family, trust, friendship, emotions, positivity, resilience. And that's probably a really good point to start talking about the folks at Deborah. Our Deborah supporters and your importance to the whole EB community. As a group, I think we all understand what's important in life and that's what unites us. Tony Byrne, CEO of Deborah. Thank you for your leadership and your efforts. The support you receive from everyone within Deborah, from directors to all staff. To Mr. Jim Irvin and all trustees. Now, Jim is the chairman 
of the Board of Trustees. And it's a privilege to have met Jim and it's humbling to see how hard he works and other trustees work for the charity. Thank you to them. To Mr. Graham Souness, Mr. Simon Weston and Mr. Frank Warren, President and Vice President of Deborah UK. Your time, your energy, your knowledge, your efforts. Thank you so much for everything you do. Without this common understanding and support, Deborah would not be able to invest in the vital research into a cure and treatment for EB. And there'll be less healthcare professionals supporting on a daily basis people in the community who are suffering from EB at Great Ormond Street, across the UK and across the world. You make the difference. Without you, we could end up in a situation where we go beyond words. And that's a frightening situation. Please take care. Stay safe. Thank you for your support and your ongoing support. It's fundamental. It's a privilege to be involved in this group. All our love and best wishes, the Grists. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Well, um, I don't really know what to say, um, apart from obviously a huge thank you to all of you for sticking with us as a charity. Um, that's why we do the work that we do. It's for families like the Grist. Um, and we can't do that work without your help. We can't do it without you out there fundraising, taking part in events, doing challenges, regular giving, whatever it might be. Um, today is our chance to say thank you. I think we've done that a few times. I've got one more thank you teed up though. Um, that's from our chair of trustees, uh, Jim Irvin. So if we can roll the tape, please. On behalf of everyone at Deborah, uh, it falls with me to bring tonight's events a close uh, with a number of thank yous. Um, I'd like to start by thanking all of you out there for all of your continued support for Deborah, not just in the last year, but the 40 years prior and your commitment going forward. As you've heard from the speakers uh, tonight, we, despite the obvious challenges of the last 12 months, we've still managed to do some extraordinary work, both in the UK and internationally in the last year. EB is a dreadful condition, as you all know, uh, and Deborah continues in its efforts to ensure that we do all that we can to improve the quality of lives of those living with EB as we simultaneously seek a cure. Your trustees will ensure that the money that you all help raise is directed to invest in research, to specialist healthcare, to supporting our EB community in, in so many different ways, and and in our efforts to work internationally and collaborate internationally with our EB partners. I want to thank tonight's speakers, starting with our Royal Patron, uh, Her Royal Highness the Countess of Wessex. We're absolutely thrilled to have you on board. Uh, your passion and commitment are incredible. Thank you, ma'am. To Gareth Inman, Gareth, for the fantastic work that you've been doing over the years and will continue to do, we're delighted to, to work with you in finding a cure. To uh, Isla and to the Gris family, thank you so much. You are incredible ambassadors for Deborah and for EB in so many different ways. Your stoicism and your bravery are incredible and are so typical of every family that I've met living with EB. Thank you all. To Graham Souness, uh, Graham, welcome and, uh, and help your help in joining the fight, along with Frank Warren and, and with Simon Weston helping us raise awareness of the condition and, and significant funds to help invest uh, in, in the research. I'd also take the, like to take the opportunity to thank our army of volunteers out there. You all help in so many different ways, uh, not just in raising funds, but supporting our community. Without your help and support, we would not be here to do the work on your behalf. Thank you. Together, we continue this journey. Together we will fight EB, 
together we will beat EB. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Jim. Um, so I'm going to wrap up in a minute, but just to let you all know, um, we've recorded this event. Um, we'll be circulating it, attaching it to our website, that sort of thing. Um, we uh, would welcome you, your feedback, questions, comments, etc. I see there's been a little bit of action in the in the chat box, um, but in the, on the screen in a minute, you'll you'll have my direct contact details. Um, but most of all, I need to leave you with a message about how much we value your support your continued support that is on behalf of everyone at Deborah. Thank you for joining us today.